Everybody tells everybody we're up, but we're not. Uh, There's a long way to go, and uh, we just got to keep playing the way we're playing. And uh, you know, don't think we're up too much because we're, we're definitely not up. We've just got to keep a gap between us and Tranmere and all the other teams. And uh, I'm sure if we keep playing the way we're playing, you know, nobody can stop us. Newcastle were on a twice a week schedule. Although Southend's Roots Hall was uncharted waters for the club, the division's newcomers provided ferocious opposition. Gavin Peacock gave the Magpies a first half lead, but a tremendous second half fight back earned Southend a point by full time. That'll be a penalty. Kevin Scott fouled in certainly. Andy Sussex then for 1 1. And no chance for Cernicek there. South end of battle for it. And teed up for O'Brien. And Clark can't follow in either. O'Brien, not a testing free kick. Clark can't believe he couldn't follow up. Following another away trip, a 1-1 cup draw at Rotherham. Newcastle were on their travels once again with Luton Town, this time showing some stubborn resistance. Newcastle fans had come to regard anything other than the win as a major letdown. But a goalless draw at Kenilworth Road still took some achieving. The name of Arthur Cox will always carry special significance for United fans, but even more so when it's linked with Kevin Keegan. The two men who brought United their previous promotion were head-to-head -head again at the end of January. Well, I think I learned a lot to, from Arthur Cox. I mean, I think we're very similar. We're not a similar type of people. We're totally different in our appearance to the public. But I think deep down, when you look, if you could have looked inside, we're pretty much the same. Um, I think he's got good principles. He, he's an honest man, works very hard. And I like to think that that's what we're trying to do here, and all my staff are. And uh, so a lot of that's rubbed off. All Derby's massive expenditure had failed to buy a convincing challenge for the top of the table, but they still gave a live TV audience another thriller, with Newcastle fighting a long uphill battle. Medini's got the cross in, and Johnson! Tommy Johnson, 1-0! It's a dangerous cross, Clark couldn't reach it, against the upright! Oh, how close can you get? It's a tremendous ball through the middle for Gabbiadini. Cernicek, he hasn't done enough. Over the top, what a waste. Now, Robert Lee, well into stoppage time now. And O'Brien's in the middle, and O'Brien, the equaliser. 1-1, Liam O'Brien. Newcastle had so nearly clawed their way to promotion three years before under the stewardship of Jim Smith. One of the league's most popular and respected managers, the Bald Eagle had moulded another team ready to challenge for the top, this time at Portsmouth. Fratton Park was the sort of ground where they only had memories of glorious times. But in another mighty contest, Newcastle found the famous Pompey Chimes were ready to ring out again. Slows down again by Beresford. Aspinall. A chance here perhaps, Whittingham, 1-0, Guy Whittingham, they just can't stop this man scoring goals, that's number 33, Kelly right the way back there, because Kit Simons has gone forward, Harrisford on the post, Maguire is up there as well, Wolves with a little touch, oh what a goal by Simons! Kit Simons went up for the header that came up with a shot that would please any centre forward. Very little in it on the play of the second half. Newcastle probably shading it rather, but still not able to produce that goal. Kelly flicking it on. Clark looking to go through the middle. Clark going all the way. And Knight just about did enough, but it wasn't that convincing. Lee Clark, a good break. Through the middle there. Sheedy trying to turn. Out wide for Beresford. Beresford looking for the penalty. And getting it as well, I think. John Beresford. Who ironically scored a penalty for Portsmouth when Newcastle were here last season. The opening goal. David Kelly with a chance to get Newcastle back into this game off the bar and over the top and that's a golden chance 
tossed away by David Kelly. Missing the penalty at the end was just the final nail in the coffin. But I think the effort from the lads was tremendous. Uh, we got caught a little bit cold on the first goal. The second one, it, I suppose if the lads plays in 100 years, he won't hit one better, not for a centre-half anyway. This was surely the toughest part of the season. It was next stop Upton Park, where Billy Bonds was trying to take West Ham back up at the first attempt. The Hammers had been close on Newcastle's heels all season, and again it proved another close encounter, this time of the competitive kind. Both teams had a footballing reputation, but on the day it was fierce commitment all the way, but ultimately no goals. After such a programme, bottom of the table Bristol Rovers at home were supposed to offer a less demanding chance of three points. But under the short-term guidance of that wily veteran Malcolm Allison, Rovers soon made light of the length of the first division that separated them. Even Keegan's highly motivated troops found it hard to get going for this one. Stalemate and frustration. Another Sunday game, this time at Tranmere, saw Newcastle right under the spotlight. Rovers were United's third away game in a row against promotion rivals, and the Tynesiders had a meagre three goals and two points to show from their previous six games. As throughout the season, even live television coverage couldn't deter another massive travelling support. The two armies saw their devotion rewarded in emphatic style. Kelly the target, Peacock gets it into the middle, Nixon's still able to collect it, I don't think they're going to get that one, 30 years ago perhaps, not these days. Morrissey now takes it up, taken off by Martindale away from Muir and they got themselves in a bit of a tangle there and that's played into the path of David Kelly, a great ball out by Lee Clark. Here's Kelly running the defence, Lee is in the middle, still with Kelly. He went all the way, just couldn't get the right angle, I don't think, there for the shot that would have troubled Eric Nixon. Benison looking for Kelly. Higgins got there first, Martindale out for Morrissey. Scott is going to have to use Cernicek. Cernicek lining up the kick and thumping it. Not out of play though. Mongol, Beresford, lovely ball over the top there. Now Lee Clark, can he get around the back of the defence here? There's a bit of space opened up. Lee Clark looking for the shot and finished off, and it's a goal there. Robert Lee picks up the pieces. 1 0 to Newcastle. The shot by Lee Clark was perhaps disappointing, but it certainly gave the chance to Robert Lee. That's tremendous that. There's a great ball from John Berris for the lovely little volley, which is obviously very difficult, down the line to Lee Clark. And again, he's just done what David Kelly did. He was very, very positive, went round the defendant, picked up his pace, got his shot on target. That's the most important thing. The keeper's dropped it, but in you go. Robert Lee's there to stick it in. Kelly settling for that. Yeah, he's done well there, David Kelly, to get a corner out of that. That's what it's all about in those situations. He's got no support. All he's going to do is try and get the best he can. He's got a corner. Right on that near post, Lee Clark taking the corner kick. Scott gets a little header to it. And Kelly, and it's the second goal. It's David Kelly. 2-0 to Newcastle now. And Kelly as well ends his personal goal doubt. That's a tremendous goal. Great little flick on at the near post. It had beaten everybody. Everybody had gone in front of it. Gavin Peacock, but David Kelly there. He just held himself out. And that's the most difficult thing to do for a striker, to hold the ground so that it comes out. And there he is, look, he holds himself up. Tremendous strike. And it's too easy there to knock the ball over the top, but he's kept it down. The northeast four dealers award goes to Stephen Howie. But now we could be finishing off in style. Robert Lee. Lee looking to finish here. And he strolls it in, Robert Lee, his second of the game, Keegan's on his feet, it's 3-0, the fans are dancing, it's goodbye Tranmere, and Newcastle right back in top gear and finishing in style. That's tremendous save, 
they took up some pressure there. A great ball from Lee Clark through the middle to David Kelly. Great control and great vision. He's seen over his shoulder that Robert Lee's there, and he's just played a two-touch pass, one-touch control, two-touch. He's played him in. Robert Lee's gone at the defenders there. Look at that. There it is in that backside again, that far post. Great goal. And after taking a bit of pressure from Tramir, they've done it on the break. Meanwhile, developments were afoot at St James Park. This is the time capsule which is going in, and there's various things in it. And so, in a hundred years' time, when they knock it down, they'll say, "Yeah, hey, you bugger." <laughs> the development is part of an ambitious scheme costing some 5.6 million pounds. It's the start of taking Newcastle United in the 21st century to give us an all-seater stadium within the next two to three years. Sir John's plans envisage the transformation of Newcastle leases with a multi-use St James Park Stadium at the heart of new sporting and leisure facilities. And giving Newcastle United and its fans facilities that are not only up to the standard of the FA Premier League and the Taylor Report, but put the club on a par with the best in Europe. Their performance against Tranmere seemed to restore all the team's free-flowing football. Not that too many insiders had seen the so-called crisis some sceptics were too ready to point out. Brentford were totally steamrolled, a five-star performance that might still be remembered for the one that got away. With the corner kick. Still not clear, Benstead under pressure and misses it. Lee and Kelly and 1-0. He's not going to turn down a chance like that. Beresford again, looking the free kick forward, a little flick from Kelly to Lee Clark. Clark gets face to face on goal, it wouldn't fall for Stimson. And back there for Bracewell. 2 0. So simple, so effective by Paul Bracewell. Bracewell again, working in close conditions. Kelly, all bouncing awkwardly, and Lee Clark, that's three. It's Lee Clark now, Newcastle running riot. Nobody wants to miss out. Lee Clark takes a bow. Playing the ball in, and it's an own goal, is it? By Kevin Scott. This is Kelly O'Brien next to him. Kelly going all the way and bringing the save out of Benstead. And Kelly again, and Beresford. Beresford still looking to get this one in. Stimson. That's four. Robert Lee. No stopping Newcastle again, and a goal of stunning simplicity. Cernicek gets a touch to it, and Bracewell hooks it away for Robert Lee. There could be a tremendous break on here, and Benson should get to this one first. It was substitute Alan Nielsen who broken, and Robert Lee, and is he going to go in? That is a sensational goal for Robert Lee. I don't think the referee's going to give it now. Whether he claims the whistle had already gone, and that'll be some talking point after this game. Beresford. Clark made the run. Can he make it count? Clark! It's five this time. And no mistake by Lee Clark. There's nothing to hide his head for. But the smile tells the story. David Kelly takes the ride. Lee Clark, oh, it's all fun and games now. So, five goals had the Gallogate ecstatic, but Robert Lee wasn't celebrating after his wonder goal was disallowed. The keeper came out of his goal, he kicked it to me like just past the halfway line, not. I chested it down and like, volleyed it in the left foot, straight in the goal. And for reasons that beyond me, the referee's given a free kick to us, and um, I, mean, I said to him, it's the worst decision I've ever seen. And uh, I mean, I've been playing nine, ten years, and it is the worst decision I've ever seen. Lee's bitter disappointment was understandable enough, but in fairness, referee Ian Hendrick had just blown for offside against Brentford. This still shows Barry Venison appealing at the top. The referee has the whistle in his mouth, and Lee is still to shoot. 
It must have been impossible to predict such an advantage. Not many players could have matched Robert Lee's reaction. It was just a crying shame.